So it's 4.35 a.m. Um, and the latest tally is 285 for the Tories, 184 for Labour of the two big parties. Uh, didn't catch the others. Um, a lot of focus on the leader seats, of course. Um, Johnson and Corbyn have retained their seats. Uh, the big news with the leaders is Joe Swinton has lost her Western Bartonshire seat. And they've just showed footage of uh, Nicola Sturgeon, you know, openly celebrating that. Um, in a sense, this has echoes of 2015, because like 2015, it was a big sweep for the Tories and the SNP. But 2015, um, Labour still done significantly better than tonight. If that exit poll turns out to be correct, then this will be the worst Labour defeat since 1983. And what's incredible is traditional Labour seats like Workington and Cumbria, um, Bishop Auckland, down the road here in County Durham, um, Labour since 1935 is now Tory. Um, and Sunderland Central, where I am, is now marginal. Julie Elliott retained her seat, but it was pretty close, too close for comfort. Um, they're interviewing Hilary Benn now, so uh, I believe he's Leeds South, I'm not sure. Um, um, hmm. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm not happy with this. I, um, I see it basically, as Jo Swinson said, I thought she was very gracious and moderate in her concession speech. I mean, yes, she was a controversial leader. I had some issues with her, but I thought she made a good balance in her concession speech and she made the point that we now see nationalism and both sides in England and in Scotland. Um, and in Northern Ireland, it seems that the nationalist parties or the nationalist factions have, uh, I haven't looked at that result closely, but I heard a report on Sky that they have now, um, they outnumber the unionists for the first time. So a poll in Northern Ireland may be possible. Nicola Sturgeon was of course saying that uh, the destiny of the Scottish people should be in their hands. Um, they interviewed Theresa May, who refuted that naturally. Uh, I think focusing on the labour loss, because that is probably the big story of tonight. I know people in this city who are lifelong labour voters, traditional old labour people, who vote Tory tonight in Sunderland. I don't think as an endorsement of Johnson or Johnsonism, but as an endorsement of Brexit. Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. The Green Party can say this is a climate election, but I suspect that the majority of voters don't have that on their minds. Um, Caroline Lucas retained her seat in Brighton Pavilion, not really surprising there. Um, it's a very... I'm not celebrating this. Not at all. I mean, on this, Johnson is absolutely serious about reversing Tory cuts. Then the rough sleepers I see in this city and around the country, the rise in food banks, the increase in the wealth poverty gap, and those left at the bottom, the hounding of disabled claimants. I do not trust the Tories to change that situation. And um, I think the great tragedy with this is that Corbyn could have been another athlete if it wasn't for his dangerous far left worldview. So he said that he'll stay on as leader, but he won't be contesting the next general election. He is he's 70 years old, of course. So the big question now is who succeeds Corbyn within Labour? Who brings it forward? Is the Labour Party dead? I don't think so. I think Labour will recuperate, but it's been a bruising, tough night, like the Lib Dems in 2015. Um, I mean, really, we're going back to 1983, so we're talking 30, 36 years. Um, 
it looks like this is patching up, so we may actually have a definitive uh, sort of results in the Sean Downing Street now. Um, there's been quite a quick election actually um, in terms of the results coming through in, in terms of the traction, because it's still only 4:40 a.m. Usually, unless I'm mistaken, it takes to seven or eight in the morning to really get a very clear direction of where we're going. But it seems to be the results are tallying up, so it seems that the returning officers have been done a very good job tonight. Although there were reports in one of the London constituencies of violence breaking out, or that might be hyperbole. Um, Kensington there seemed to be a bit of a ruckus about something, I don't know what that was about. Um, I'm not a Tory, but if anything good comes out of that, um, I trust the Tories more than probably any other party when it comes to crime. I just wish that they would uh, actually invest money where it matters and, you know, where we see a change in the situation of weak sentencing, which is something I feel very strongly about. But, you know, if there's increased nationalism in Scotland, if the nationals have gained ground in Northern Ireland, it just seems that we're getting closer to the to the disillusion of the United Kingdom. Nothing short. And I don't want to be reckless in saying that, but I'm very, very worried about this direction. So if you're really patriotic and love this country, um, and you think that Johnson's victory represents that, um, legally, of course, the SNP can't just unilaterally declare independence, but I really think that um, this has echoes of 2015. Be interested to see what the actual polls are. Of course, we don't go by the popular vote in this country, but we'll still still be interested to see what that is. I hope the Greens haven't gained ground on the ground that they endorse Extinction Rebellion. And I regard Extinction Rebellion as reckless, hypocritical extremists. So I um, I hope the Greens go down because I think that they actually have some pretty extreme positions. Um, in a sense, it's been a traditional election insofar as the big parties have been the focus. But, you know, there hasn't been major traction of smaller parties. The Brexit party is kind of a kind of a passing fad. Uh, you know, it's lasted pretty much a year. Um, no word of UKIP tonight at all. So I don't know what the situation was with UKIP. Um, there seemed to be a lot of grey area between them, them and the Brexit party. Um, my gut feeling is not a good one. I am very concerned about the future of this country. If there is anything good, though, on policy area, yes, I do trust the Tories more. And... A Labour victory would have meant another EU referendum uh, and prolonged uncertainty. So at least if we have some clarity, that's something. But if a no deal Brexit results in increased polarisation in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, Scotland and Northern Ireland in particular, then that really doesn't bode well for the United Kingdom. And it may be that this Brexit thing will be the beginning of the end of the United Kingdom. And that is an utter, utter tragedy. I'm not going to get too dystopian just yet, but that's the situation. It showed Boris Johnson on his way to London, so whether he's preparing to... Uh, well, preparing to go to the palace, I imagine, later today. Little surprise that Corbyn didn't resign there and then. I mean, the man must be utterly exhausted. It was quite um, quite an emotional speech. He uh, attacked the media for sometimes, as he put it, disgusting attacks on his family. Um, I think it's... I will say this. Um, I really dislike how big media pundits, and Andrew Neil is one of the top offenders, although I think he's a very good journalist, and he is definitely consistent in terms of his style, you know, he doesn't 
show bias, although he's been called a conservative. He grills everyone that's before him in a more methodical way, I would suggest, than Paxman. But there is this thing you get with big media hacks that they love gotcha moments. And what I don't understand with general elections is kind of telling a candidate what they already know. Oh, you lost badly tonight. Why did that happen? And the candidate answers, but you can see that you lost badly. And it's almost like they like to rub salt in the wound. I do not like that style of questioning. I think it's a bit sensationalist and um, I just don't think it's necessary. I actually think Andrew Neil is a very talented journalist, but I just think that sometimes you get big media, big wigs like to get their little gotcha style moments. I don't like it. If that's what Corbyn was referring to, I think he has a point. There you have it. Um, let me know where where you live. If you um, if you're in the UK, what's happening in your seat? If indeed you're staying up for the results, I'll leave it there for now.